Hey there. So do you remember a long time ago, or maybe it was recently, when you went out for drinks, had a little too much, and thought, what's really happening inside of my body? I know I do. Before I tell you more, if you feel like you got some value from this video, be sure to like it and subscribe as well to learn more about how food is affecting your health. When you drink alcohol, moderately, your body's reaction depends on several factors, like how recently you've eaten, and even if the alcohol is mixed with another beverage. Under normal circumstances, the liver can make glucose, store it, and break it down to be released into the blood. This gives our brain and muscles energy and prevents potentially dangerous episodes of hypoglycemia, also known as super low blood sugar. When you have alcohol being filtered through your system by the liver, that important organ is temporarily inhibited from being able to make new glucose, which could lead to lower than normal glucose levels. However, alcohol has also been found to trigger the breakdown and release of stored glucose, which counters the previously mentioned effects of alcohol and leads to a more balanced glucose response. This means that reasonable alcohol consumption shouldn't significantly affect glucose levels for the average healthy person who's eating a standard diet. Great. That being said, this is not the same for those who might be fasting or are in a ketogenic state. In these cases, people have less glucose stored in their liver and muscles, so alcohol can cause blood sugar levels to fall dangerously low. If you're not fasting, studies show that light to moderate alcohol consumption could actually have its perks. Healthy individuals who have one to one and a half drinks before a carb heavy meal can experience significantly lower post meal glucose than if the same meal were eaten without alcohol. And compared to heavy drinkers or those who abstain completely, people who consume moderate levels of alcohol have also been found to benefit from higher insulin sensitivity. The benefit of alcohol consumption is likely due to an increase in the body's levels of adiponectin, which is a protein with anti-diabetic and anti-inflammatory effects. But listen, please don't use this as an excuse to overdo it. Heavy long-term and binge drinking can wear down your body over time and encourage a slew of health issues. Chronic heavy alcohol use can also cause alcoholic liver disease, or ALD, and it's known that people with ALD have a higher risk for insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. Binge drinking can also severely increase inflammation within the body and brain and can disrupt neural control of your metabolism. In general, our bodies do a fantastic job at adapting to alcohol consumption, and glucose levels shouldn't be a problem for healthy individuals who enjoy light to moderate drinking. Here's what light to moderate drinking means in case you're curious. All that being said, alcohol consumption can have layered effects on our metabolism. While it may blunt a blood sugar spike, alcohol can also be detrimental to our metabolic health by disrupting sleep. So be careful. If this video left you wanting to learn more about the complex connection between alcohol and your glucose levels, check out our full length blog post linked in the description of this video. Thanks for being responsible and I'll see you in the next video.